everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week is part two of the How to Jam, How to Improvise mini-series. So last week was EP099, and if you haven't watched last week, I recommend starting with that one. Uh, you can get all that at ActiveMelody.com. Uh, but then uh, this week is an extension of that, so we're still playing over the same four chords, uh, but I have a new jam track uh, to go along with this week's lesson. Also, I have it in two tempos as well, so if you're a beginner, I have a slower tempo version. Uh, so you're going to learn eight bars worth of new licks, um, and you can put the two lessons together and you have this great little jam session. Also, uh, since it's uh, my 100th episode, that's what the EP stands for, um, I wanted to do something special for premium members. So if you're a premium member, um, I have a version of this that's played with no accompaniment. So it's just one guitar. So I wanted to show you how you could do this. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at that. Alright, so be sure to look for EP100 if you want to download the tablature, the jam tracks, the extra video content, and the little bonus lesson as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first part. Alright, so I had to switch guitars because this one has the fret markers and the, uh, the little Alvarez uh, parlor guitar that I played in the intro does not. This is my crappy Taylor that you'll hear me refer to from time to time. Do not like this guitar. I intentionally don't show the, the, the name in the headstock. It's just, I, I don't want to give them a plug. Uh, but anyway, um, so if you haven't watched part one, it's EP099, uh, and I'm gonna, there's a lot of things I cover in that that I'm not going to cover in this, so I'm going to assume you've watched that. So the first chord, as this thing loops through, there's four chords. The first chord is an A7 chord, and this first lick that I played in this part, in part two, was like this. It's two full bends, starting here on the 10th fret, first string. Now let me explain where we're coming from, where these notes are coming from. Um, the A minor pentat this is part of the A minor pentatonic scale, and so to get to the A minor pentatonic scale, if you were to play an A major bar chord, wherever your bar is, that's your root fret. So now that we know our root fret, we can work our minor pentatonic scale pattern one, which I've covered this in lots of videos, and I have a whole blues lead course. If you haven't checked that out, I go through all the patterns and explain all that stuff. But anyway, pattern one is here. Pattern two is here. So pattern two, when I did this lick, I started it right here on the 10th fret first string. That's where that's coming from. It's pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale key of A. And I did two full bends, and I, I ended it at the top of the bend. So in other words, I didn't bend and release. I didn't do, I went like this. And you can see I used my right hand here to just kind of mute the string. Now, doing a full bend on an acoustic guitar is not as easy as electric guitar, especially th on this guitar, this, this has medium gauge strings, and it's actually really kind of painful to try and do a full bend. Uh, if you've got a lighter gauge string, string, it's a lot easier. That little Alvarez that I played in the intro, that has a much lighter gauge string, and it's, it's very easy to do a full bend. But anyway, you can do it, and if you can't, you can always kind of work around it and slide up, you know, just do something like that. Uh, it's not quite the same but you, you can get some kind of an effect. So, okay, so I do two full bends over the A chord, and you see why, because it's minor pentatonic. Then the song switches to a D, or a D9 to be specific. And for that, I went. Now let me go over what I played, and then I'll show you where it come, came from. So I'm, again, on the 10th fret first string, and this time I'm gonna do a bend and a release. I have my, pointer finger on the 8th fret 1st string right behind it and then watch this I did two of those 10th fret 1st string and gave it a little vibrato as I played it now watch this so that's just the 8th fret again back to the 10th fret so really we're, we're doing everything here on this 10th fret and the 8th fret on the 1st string uh, for that part of it so um, that's over the D chord now, some of you may, that's another thing is I didn't, I did a hammer on there on that last note between the 8th fret and the 10th fret. It's easier. You could pick it, but I think it's easier to just hammer it on. Uh, now, why does that work? Well, when we think of the D minor pentatonic, if we were to make a D bar chord, we 
we'd make it up here. Our bar would be up here on the 10th fret, right? So if you think of the notes in the D minor pentatonic scale, it looks like that. Now when I go like this, look, what, look at the notes. These are right out of that minor pentatonic scale. Now I'm shifting it down and I'm playing it here, so this would technically be a, a different pattern. It wouldn't be pattern one, but it's the same notes. Those two notes. I'm just playing them here on the first string. So that's why they work, even when the chord is switched to a D. And it's convenient because it's in the same little place that the A uh, minor pentatonic scale was. So then the song switches to a G, or G13 to be specific. You just think of it as a G in terms of scales. Uh, and so what I played was something very similar to what I did for the A and the D, but I did it over the G major pentatonic scale, not minor. So it sounded like this. So let's talk about that and where that's coming from. So if we're making it, let's let's get our boundaries. So the G, let's first of all find the G minor pentatonic. I always like to start with that and then work my way into the major. So making a G chord, your bar goes down on the third fret. That's your root fret. So that's your root fret. So the minor pentatonic scale would be here. The major pentatonic scale, remember we shift everything down three frets. One, two, three. So it would look like this. So the, the nut here becomes your, you know, where your pointer finger would have gone. Now, so when I play this little riff, look at where that is. That's pattern two of the major pentatonic scale. See? So, so that's why this lick, now by the way, here's a kind of an interesting little nuance. When you're doing that bend, uh, you can do a full bend, which would definitely be major, or you can do a half bend, which means you're only going to go up one fret, and it's going to have more of a bluesy uh, feel. So it depends on how much pressure you put as to the, the effect, the emotion that you portray on that one. So. Just keep that in mind. Uh, either one is correct though, and either one would work. So it's the third, I start here on the fifth fret first string, and then I go back and forth between the fifth fret and the third fret on the first string. All right, so let me back up and I'll play everything up to that point. It's kind of hard without the jam track in the background. So we have, and then it goes to the, the D chord. And then it goes to the G chord and goes. And then it goes to the C chord. And what I played over that was kind of a Bill Haley type lick, I guess. I'm not really sure who, where that one originated, but I, hear, I think of that in a lot of 50s uh, stuff. Um, Chuck Berry used it a little bit, but um, uh, let's talk about. The, the, the specifics here. So I come up to the 8th fret 3rd string and I do a hammer on to the ninth fret on the 3rd string. Now let's, if you look at this little shape, this is going to make sense. Let me show you the notes and then and then you'll see what we're doing. We're basically, we're building the C chord, the top part of the C chord. So the C chord will be here, right? So we built that part of the chord. Now we're going to come to the 8th fret 2nd string, 10th uh, fret 2nd string, and then the 8th fret 1st string. So we're going to hammer on that part of it. We're going to pick that part of it. And then we're going to pick that note. So that's really, if you look at what you're doing, if you could draw a line or draw a dot on your guitar for each of these places that you're playing, it's all part of the C chord, C major chord, with the exception of this which would make it a C13. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that's where that's coming from. It's really C major pentatonic scale. Now, once you walk your way up to this first string on the eighth fret, then watch this. Really pretty easy to do. All you're doing is you're matching a note. Uh, you're starting with the note on the first string, then you're coming to the second string, and I start here on the 11th fret, and I slide up to the 13th fret on the second string, which happens to be the same note as the 8th fret first string. So it's just a combination of sliding to it here, matching it here.
sliding, matching. Just like that. In the beginning, uh, when you're just learning how to do this, just do it that way. Just something very, don't worry about the rhythm yet. Just try and get the technique down, the little slide part. Once you can do that, then you're going to want to go into a timing that sounds like this. So it's, it's almost a triplet feel. It goes... And you can see the right hand, I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, and that's the timing of it. Da, 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 da. Uh, so just kind of think of that in your head. Okay, so that's really the first half. Let me play through it again. So it starts here on this A. There's the D part. Now we go to the G. Then we go to the C. Now, to the next part, the next time through, uh, then I came up and went and play this. And really, I'm just playing a C, or I'm sorry, an A chord, but I'm using that D shape. So you should by now know how to make a D chord down in first position. It's that same shape, but if you make it up here so that your pointer finger and ring finger are on the ninth fret, and your, uh, I'm sorry, your pointer finger and your middle finger on the ninth fret, your ring finger's on the 10th fret, second string. And you just play those top three strings. That's an A chord. And I've explained this one before, um, when you're making an A, any major bar chord, so this, this, that's what's nice about this, is this will be a quick way to, to be able to come to this chord. If you're making a major bar chord, wherever these two fingers are, skip one fret and then go to this fret, and you make the D chord, D chord shape you can make a higher version of that chord that you were just on. So that applies if you're in a G, if you're in an F. So it's just a visual way to kind of quickly get to that chord. So that's what I'm doing when I go. It's just playing kind of a jazzy, uh, and by sliding back and forth, it gives it, uh, again, sort of a Bill Haley in the Comets type uh, feel. Um, so, so what I'm doing there is... Um, I'm sliding back and forth, going down a fret, and the tab will have all this really, uh, you know, timed out uh, properly. But that's all I'm doing from a fretting perspective. It's pretty easy, just sliding back and forth. And then watch this. Now I did this over the D chord, so as it switched to the D, I came up, and look how easy this is. You're just barring the first three strings. Uh, starting here on the 7th fret, and then you're going down to the 6th fret, and then down to the 5th fret, and just repeating that. And what that is, that's a very useful chord, believe it or not, just barring those top three strings. It's a, the top part of a ninth chord. So back to that D9, if you look at those, those notes out of that chord, you're, that's all you're doing. You're making the top part, the top three strings of that nine chord without having to do this whole thing. It'd be hard to, harder to go. It's just harder on your fingers as opposed to grabbing it this way. You'll hear this used a lot in funk, you know, especially like a lot of that James Brown stuff. Uh, is using that same technique where you're just using the top part of a ninth chord. So, um, okay. So we have... The A, then we have the, and the timing of it is dot, 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 da da. And you're, and really that's an E9, and you're coming down to a D9. That's the, the chord that you're making. Okay, now after that, the song switches to a G. And for the G, I went. Now look at what I did here. Uh, I came up and played a G seventh chord, so this is this will be an aha moment for some of you. Um, if you make a D seventh chord down in first position, it looks like this. Remember we we played off the D shape, the D major shape. The D seventh looks like this, kind of the, like a, a mirrored opposite of of the D. Well, if you come up and play it up here, or, or I'm sorry, up here, so that you're ring finger and your middle finger are on the 7th fret. 
uh, first and third strings, and then your pointer finger goes down on the sixth fret second string. That's a G7. So remember I showed you a minute ago how to, uh, we played off of the A. So if this is an A, look at where these two guys are, skip a fret and we come up like this, and you make an, another A up here. Well that same principle applies if you just switch the order of, instead of playing this finger here on the, for the A chord on the 10th fret, if you switch it so that it's uh, down here on the uh, 8th fret, that's a se A 7th chord. So when we're on the G and I play this, that's a G 7th chord. That's the top uh, of, you know, Robert Johnson, you know, when you hear a kind-hearted woman, for example. That's where that's coming from, or a red house. So that's where this little chord, this little G seventh chord is coming. And just remember that. So anytime you're making a major seventh or major chord, you can always do a quick seventh version, which will be a real bluesy representation of that chord. So, okay, so once the song came to the G part, um, all I did was I slid up to uh, where the ring finger and middle finger are on the 7th the, uh, fret, just like that, that D7 shape. And then I grabbed the top, those top three strings there, just barred them with my ring finger. It's on the 5th fret. And look at that. So that's, this is the G chord, the top three strings of the G chord. So I'm barring these two strings on the 3rd fret, the 1st and 2nd string. And then I got my middle finger down on the, the uh, fourth fret, uh, third string. If, well, the reason I say it's the top part of the chord, if you're making a G chord like this, it's these top three strings. So you don't have to make the entire chord. So then, to back up and c cover what we did over the G part, it went... Look at that. There's just that, b that little bar there. And then we're down here bar again on the fifth fret and then we end that way now think about what just happened there with this that's important because that's a rhythmic quality that you can you can use in anything you're doing let's say you're playing something in E it goes to A and it goes to a B So hopefully, you know, this is inspiring some of you to uh, to kind of branch out beyond just what I'm showing you. You can take these little these little licks and start manipulating them in ways that uh, you know that go into what you want to create. Okay, so let me back up. We've covered a lot here. Uh, we'll go from the beginning of the uh, the second time through. So, okay, so you have the A chord. You have the D chord. You have the G chord. And then we go to the C chord and it goes. And that's, uh, this will make sense too once you see where it's coming from. When you make a C major bar chord, it's here so that your bar is on the 8th fret. So when I'm playing this little lick, I'm starting by doing the barring the first two strings on the 8th fret. Then I'm doing uh barring the first three strings on the uh 10th fret but i'm only playing strings two and three and then watch this i'm building that chord so i'm barring the first three strings on the eighth fret and i'm playing strings two and three but i'm going to hammer on to the ninth fret third string like that so we have okay now back to this, which is the 10th fret, strings 2 and 3, and then watch this. And for that, I'm sliding up, I'm using my ring finger on the 12th fret 3rd string, my middle finger on the 11th fret 2nd string, sliding up to that. Okay, and I'm going to just explain that in just a second, but let's get back. Sorry. And then we're back to the 10th fret, and back to building the top part of the C chord. All right, so we have. Let me do it again slowly.
Okay, so when I slid up to this, look at where that is in relation to the the bar. Everything it plays off the chord when you're when you're soloing like this, especially if you, if you're doing. It's especially important to remember when you're doing multiple strings like this, because you can you can apply these same tricks over and over again. So if your bar chord is here. You can slide up to this little position. So just see where it is in relation to the bar, in relation to the other fingers. Because it would apply if you were in a G. So you don't have to have a capo uh, every time. You can start to see how everything plays. Your finger is a capo, a natural capo anyway. And you can start to see how that little bluesy lick, where that comes from in relation to the root fret. So that's all I did when I played that little uh, lick. All right, so let me back up and I'll play through everything that we learned uh, in this and we'll play through it slowly. So here we go. And that's all we have for this part. So make sure you uh, go to uh, activemelody.com, check out EP100, and you can download the tablature. Uh, the jam track is very important for this one to get your timing and all of that. Uh, two versions of the jam track, I got a slow version. I've also got that bonus uh, lesson, which uh, shows you how to play all this same style, but with just one guitar. So anyway, we'll see you in next week's lesson.